Sir from 17 once again. This is my Metal Gear Solid 3 European Extreme Difficulty video walkthrough. This is the motorcycle chase, or the like Last Crusade Indiana Jones moment. And we're going to be doing a lot of shooting while moving. And I'm good at the motorcycle guys to an extent, but I'm really shit at this Suedo science fiction flying guys. Which. This is 1964, and they've got dudes flying around on things that were in Masters of the Universe, so I don't really understand how that one works. But uh, shooting the, the sidecar guys is pretty fun, I find. I think it's quite fun. Shooting the flying guys is a nightmare. And for some reason, it reminds me of Return of the Jedi when they're on the speeder bikes. I don't know why. I think it's the trees. But this is a pretty long section for what it is, and it, it can be quite tricky, I guess. But I think the mistake I made was trying to use the rifle at close range. And I know it sounds obvious when you say it out loud, but at the time I was just really enjoying the Mozin. It just didn't really benefit me too much. And, like, I'm all for rail sections, but don't affect the aim. You know, if we wanted to play really realistic games, we play those really shit army simulators where, you know, you have to... You spend two weeks crossing a field before you even see an enemy to shoot, and then before you get a chance to shoot, you've got to manually load every individual bullet, and halfway through the clip, somebody shoots you in the face from 400 yards away, and you die instantly, and the disc snaps in half because there's no retries in real army. Like, when it's a game like this, just suspend our imagination for a moment and let us have good aim. <laughs> Bloody hell, he had a rocket launcher. See that shit? That hurts. But compared to Metal Gear Solid 2, the damage on this game is very low. And I'm grateful for that because I think on Metal Gear Solid 2, I think it was a bit too crazy. You know, bosses could one-shot you. And on this game, I don't think there's a single boss that can one-shot you. And I think that's a really good thing. And I don't think that's a good thing in all games because a one-shot is perfectly fine if there's a way to evade it. And this game, avoiding stuff is really tricky just because the camera, because the controls, because how Snake moves, you know, there's a lot of elements that go towards making it more difficult than it perhaps would be if it was released in, in 2014. But this is me showing you that I'm having a really tough time shooting this guy. Like, I don't even know why. It must just be the crazy aim. But this is pretty dreadful stuff. <laughs> Just really terrible for aim. But what can you do? I'm really curious to see how Metal Gear Solid 5 handles aiming. Because 4 was was really good. Peace Walker I hated, but I understand it because it was on a PSP, so there wasn't analogs or anything. But I, I believe that Metal Gear Solid 5 is gonna change it for the better, make it more, you know, cohesive and awesome. Because how you shoot should never be a problem. It should be aiming, should be the challenge. It shouldn't be the mechanics of it are the tricky part. And unfortunately, the early Metal Gear has definitely suffered from that. Like, especially the first one. If anybody remembers when you first played the first game, like, nobody knew how to run and fire at the same time. It was like this magic trick of holding buttons, like square and X and R1 and R2. It and was just madness. And there's some parts of this game where when you've got a gun equipped and you run, Snake holds it out when you're not holding the square button. And I don't know why. Like, I don't know if it's because I've got sticky buttons or if it's just something that happens in the game. And, and then there's times when you'll aim with the right R1 to look down, to look in first person view and you'll hold the square button to aim and the gun doesn't come up. Which is really inconveniencing because... <laughs> To shoot, you have to hold the button to aim the gun and release the button to fire it, which is the strangest mechanic ever. I have no idea why they didn't just map the R1 to having the gun up and then tapping the, the square button to shoot it. But in these days, back when this came out, maybe that wasn't a thing. Or maybe it was just, you know, Konami or, or Kojima who wanted it to be, you know, so different from a first-person shooter. I, I don't know. It's... It's a very strange conceit that they got rid of, thank Christ. Which is another reason why Metal Gear Solid 4 is, does have a lot of really good qualities, because 
the gameplay on that game, it managed to do the camouflage in this game, but it made it adaptive and quick and you didn't have to fuck around with menus, which is a brilliant idea. It made it beautiful. And then the aiming was just on, on par. Like, you very rarely missed a shot. If you missed a shot, it was you. It wasn't the fact that you couldn't see down the iron sights because they were so crowded or that it controlled like shit. It was you. And I love that. I, I love it when a game... You know, he's so finely crafted that whenever I do something wrong, it's me. Like, some of the stuff on this game is perfect, and a lot of it is my own personal rust, but there are certain features that really, really show signs of age, and... You know, some people like that, because there's a lot of people that love that nostalgia stuff. I mean, some of these speedrunners, they spend months, like six to eight months, playing the same game over and over again. And at that point, you saw beyond the things that you originally didn't like. You're, you're almost a stream of consciousness at playing that game. And that's why they can do those amazing things. But thank you for watching, and you take care now.